What's up guys, my name is Dichronic, you'll see on this Destiny video, and today we're going to be doing This Week at Bungie for July 26, 2018. There's a lot of stuff in this one, I highly recommend you take a look at this one, there's a bunch of stuff you have to take a look at. There's things like the new weapons and gears they kind of revealed with a very small reveal trailer, very awesome trailer whatnot. They're going to be doing reveal streams, new Crucible uh, playlists and stuff, roadmap updates, uh, new calendar updates for Souls of Heroes, Last Iron Banner, books... Uh, pledges, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're going to be going through a lot of these. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully this video isn't too long. I'm going to be you know, going through it very briefly and hopefully uh, not wasting too much of your time. But there's a lot of stuff you're going to have to click on on this page. So make sure you go to the description down below and open up this week a bunch because you're going along because I'm not going to be including everything on here and you can click them if you want. This video has been brought to you by Hedgehogs. The fastest running, the cutest little fluffy spikers on the planet. If you guys want to get yourselves one, you can... Honestly, you probably could find one on Google, you know? I'm, I'm not selling one. Why would I sell a hedgehog? I mean, that's just... That's just weird. <laughs> and of course, guys, let me know what your favorite animal is. I'd love to include your guys' favorite animals in these videos or make recommendations. Send me uh, pictures over at Twitter, which is linked in the description down below. Pretty much just Dichronic spelled the same way. Send me your pictures of some cute animals, maybe of your cute animals, and I might include them as, uh, as one of the images in the next video. So go ahead and do that. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, new weapons and gears. This is a big thing where they're showing off a whole bunch of new weapons. This weapon in particular, you can see here, basically you, you draw a fire line along the ground and then it explodes afterwards, which I think is incredible. There's a whole bunch of really cool things. One where you can like deflect projectiles when you slide. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff. Go to This Week at Bungie and watch this video. I don't want to put it in here because it's going to be a long video anyways, and it's probably copyright. But go watch that. It's really, really cool. Next up, let's talk about the full stream ahead. Basically, a reveal stream on August 7th where they're going to be showing off a bunch of new Crucible stuff. So they're going to be showing off a bunch of things. For the most part, they're going to be showing off the new time to kill in Crucible. Basically, you're going to be killing people faster. That's pretty much what it seems like they're doing. And they're going to be revealing a whole bunch of things. Hopefully, they also show off the new weapon slot changes and how they work in Crucible. And that's going to happen on August 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or day Daylight Time, not Standard Time. Uh, just put this date into Google and it will figure out what it is your time. And it's going to be on both YouTube and Twitch this time. It's kind of funny because, you know, they were just going for Twitch and they're like, oh, we can do YouTube at the same time. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the Crucible Labs. If you don't know, Crucible Lab is basically the little X Men experimentation thing where they're just like, hey, we, we're talking about these new game modes and we want you to try them and see if, they're, if they fit. If you don't like them, we won't add them. If you do like them, we will add them. In this iteration, the second time they're doing this, uh, they're going to be showing off a new mode called Lockdown. Very much light control. However, instead of light control, you get points and then you get kills to get points off of those kills. And the more zones you have, the more points you get. Instead, it's like the Call of Duty style of domination, where the more, more zones you have every second, you'll get a tick rate. So the more zones you have at one time, you'll get more percentage per second to 100%. On top of that, if you hold all three zones, you can just win the game outright. Kind of just like you pinned him in wrestling and you win the game, which should be a very cool mechanic and definitely very, very clutch. Overall, it doesn't seem that much different than Control, but you definitely have to pay attention lest you be found with all three zones captured and you just lose the game. For the most part, I don't know when this is going to happen. They talked about 1.2.3 being out so that they can release it. They don't specifically say when they're going to do it. Next up, let's talk about the secret exotic weapon. Quest. I'm not going to be spoiling what this is, but this has to do with a weapon with the word Whisper in it, which is a returning weapon from Destiny 1 with the name Black in it. I'm not going to fully kind of spoil what it is, but it has the name Black way back in the day. It's a fan favorite, basically a special mission. Go on aisle and find a yellow health uh, enemy, I think it's a knight or something, uh, a taken guy, and you should be led on this big exotic quest. I personally haven't done it, um, but I definitely know a lot of people have done it. Uh, but it's definitely something really, really cool. And they just kind of just drop this. In the middle of, like, War Mine season, they're just like, you know what? Let's just drop this in the middle of it. It's kind of weird, but uh, kind of cool at the same time. So go out there and go get it. It is definitely one of those new weapons that might take the cake when it comes to top DPS. For, uh, for oof, I almost spoiled it a little more. Next up, let's talk about the roadmap. A lot of updates here. This came out yesterday. Not a lot to change in this section. This is already deployed. Most of these things will come out with the 31st and Solstice of Heroes. Uh, but what you want to focus on 
is what's coming up next in the preloading of Forsaken. This is going to be a week before Forsaken comes out on August 28th. Weapon slot changes. This is big. They're giving us our triple shotgun setup before the for, the Forsaken actually comes out. Milestones and challenge update, which is, we're going to talk about that just below this, with director and stuff, whatnot, heroic story missions, bulk shader deletions, and 200 additional vault slots. Lots of really cool things here. Uh, to, to, to see coming. I definitely like the vault slot, so I don't like delete my faction armor right before the DLC comes out. Oh god, that was such a bad idea, but I definitely needed space. Coming up here for these last little section here, not really much has changed on these. We pretty much know about weapon randomization, gear collections, triumphs, mod system updates, lots of stuff. New things here, power matters in Iron Banner and Trials. I haven't seen this in the past, I might have missed it, but power matters in Iron Banner and Trials. If you don't know, in Destiny 1, that's how Iron Banner and Trials was played. If you were a lower power level than your, your enemy, or a lower level, because back in the day, power wasn't a thing way back in Destiny 1's early days. If you were a lower level, you did less damage, and you took more damage. So I remember one point when the highest level was like level 34 and I was like a 22 and I was literally doing two damage headshots with my pulse rifles against the enemies and I had these two guys carry me all the way through a flawless trials. It was one of those things that I'm just like, I challenge you and also like it'll give me a bunch of armor. Uh, so it's definitely going to be cool. I definitely think that these things needed some kick in the rear because they didn't feel very competitive. It definitely felt like, oh, it's 6v6, time to just go out there and have fun. And it didn't seem like something that special. And then Trials just kind of uh, got a little boring after a while. So hopefully the power mattering will kind of tip things in, in scales. But on the other end, it is kind of dissecting the community from people being ever to be able to play these things because a lot of people are having difficulties getting certain ranks and getting enough power. So let's talk about milestones and challenges. Uh, they say they're going to be cha changing milestones. For the most part, it doesn't sound like they are. Uh, first, th there's going to be three ways to get powerful engrams and Forsaken. New challenge system, which is different from milestones, which is literally just milestones. Uh, specific quests and bounties give you better gear indicated by the summaries, which just sounds like exotic quests, which they used to give you better gear. And new mysteries or rare sources, maybe similar to that, that IO mystery with that exotic weapon that I talked about earlier. Again, something we have had already in the game. Doesn't seem like they're adding really anything different. It, the only thing extra is going to be the bounties providing better gear and the fact that these things may be re refreshed daily. So that's going to be somewhat of a change to it. But for the most part, it seems like it's going to be the same. So again, some of these will be refreshed uh, weekly, some daily, and some will be one-time sources. And these are all about powerful gear. So that's going to be interesting to see some daily powerful gear out there um, to see how that works with the new system. And in the last little set, section, they say legacy milestones that aren't going to be coming challenges or quests. So there might be milestones that are not coming back. Perhaps the heroic strikes ones will disappear. Perhaps the flashpoint will disappear. I don't know what's disappearing, what's not disappearing. Maybe the raid ones are going to disappear. Next up, let's talk about the new dates you need to mark in your calendar. This is going to be like a new set of updates. What's coming in the next month that's coming in the whatever, whatever. Uh, this is going to be the list of stuff. So first off, Souls of Heroes starts on the 31st and ends about a month later on the 27th of of August. Uh, second up, the reveal stream is right here, so if you want to refer to it, they're going to be at GamesCon and PAX West if you want to go to these things, and the last Iron Banner of Season 3 is going to be right here on uh, August 14th to the 20th, so if you want to get the last chance for Season 3 ornaments of Iron Banner, which is me, basically, uh, you can get them right here. And then lastly, the update 2.0.0 with the weapon slot changes, all that stuff we talked about earlier. Uh, this stuff here uh, is going to be here on the uh, 28th, which is a week before the release of Forsaken. Next up, they talk about a book, basically a story. Uh, if you were interested in the lore and the story, there's a bunch of cool stuff. It's $25 to pre-order, and it's uh, not. it doesn't say when it's coming out. Uh, hopefully, it comes out right around Forsaken. If you're interested in lore, or your name is, my name is Bife, go for it. Have fun. Uh, that's, that's up to you. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about how you can play this game early. This seems like kind of like an advertisement. Basically what they say here is, hey, you want to fill out questionnaires and summaries and help us make this game better? Uh, fill out this questionnaire and you can sign up to, to try out some exclusive game stuff in the future. Maybe even visit them in the studios and something in development. Maybe, maybe I can finally get invited back after I spilled coffee on on the floor anyways let's go talk about new monarchy they won the faction rally <laughs> they did it yay we, we knew what this we knew this happened we, we understand uh dead orbit got pledged the most because people wanted the graviton people worked the most on uh new monarchy this time because the last two times they worked on dead orbit and future work hall i gotta say i worked my butt off on the last three hours of the rally i got 300 tokens to finish off uh my future work called uh, sunshot man it was 
Oh, it was four minutes away from ending, and I, I freaking did it. But I'm so proud. Uh, next section here, if you're having problems, issues, glitches, come to this section. This is going to be all about that stuff. Uh, seasonal Crucible ranks being uh, glitched out, not having certain bonuses work. Uh, the hot patch for 1.2.3.1, which is on the 31st, basically the Souls of the Hero update, is going to be uh, doing some stuff. It doesn't seem like they're going to really kick you out or have you wait an hour for that to update, so it should be pretty seamless. Speaking of Souls of Heroes, it's going to be including these items. Most part, this is basically them saying, hey, there's a bunch of bugs and stuff. This is what you do if you find a bug. Uh, firstly, you have to go to the Statues of Heroes to start your Triumphs and stuff, otherwise it won't count, so make sure you do that first. Secondly, you should probably play on the character that has made the most progress in the region chest, as well as uh, all those other things, so make sure you're on the character with the most progress. For me, that's my Titan. I've done all of the region chest and all of the adventures on him. And then finally, if you delete a character, your progress may be erased or it kind of funked with, so don't delete any pro any characters um, in, in this Souls of Heroes stuff. It might mess with some of those things. So let's talk about Cade's Exotic Stash. Basically, the stuff coming with Forsaken or coming up in the future. I don't know why they call it this. This is kind of a weird way to name it. This is actually something very, very interesting and very, very important. First of all, Forsaken. We know about all these things, we understand it. These are all the things coming with Forsaken. Seasonal updates is pretty much the same thing as before. Seasonal rewards like faction rally stuff uh, that's available to all Destiny 2 owners. Special events and whatnot, quality of life updates, new crossable maps and modes. Everybody gets it, everybody has fun. Uh, for the most part, uh, as long as you're not getting these things, everybody gets these things. Now, here is the interesting thing. We're finally getting information on what's in the annual pass. This is going to be those extra DLC things on top of the DLC. So this is not the DLC. This is not the Curse of Osiris Warmind. However, if we read it, you'll find something a little bit peculiar. First off, pinnacle activities. We don't know what those are. Those are new. More weapons and armor, new and returning exotics, more endgame challenges, more raid layers. Unique for vanity rewards, triumphs, collects, lore to discover, more raid layers. For the most part, this seems like if you kind of summarize what Curse of Osiris and Warmind was. So basically, they're offering this as extra DLC on top of the actual DLC, which we don't know what they are yet. And it seems like it has the scale and content of the previous two DLCs. So they're giving us what we got before between Destiny 2's release and Forsaken. And they're giving us something that's more than those DLCs that they said they promised would be more than those DLCs. So we're getting either a shoot ton of product here, or we're getting something that's kind of piddly squat. So I'm not sure how to read this, and I kind of feel betrayed that they didn't push this hard for all this content in the Curse of Osiris to Warmind area, but this is what they've got. It's This part is actually the most disappointing because it kind of feels like they're giving us way more content than they said they were ever capable of. And then it's just like, oh, so you are capable of it. But maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion. Maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we just get a whole bunch more stuff. And that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to it. This is the end of this week at Bungie. There's a couple things here, like the raid cinematics and whatnot. This guy did a really cool montage. I recommend you check it out. This guy may have killed himself several times with his rockets due to environmental effects. I thought it was funny. And then lastly, Nightfall top scores. I didn't really play Inverted Spire, um, but I could definitely see me getting around like 180,000 score on, on Inverted Spire, which is actually really close to like number three. For the most part, I would like to see a leaderboard, Bungie. How come we don't get to see what place I am on the leaderboard? Am I 10,000th? Am I 1 millionth? How far down? How far up? How respectable is my score? I don't know if what I'm doing is good or if my doing is great or if it's just kind of average. Um, but yeah, here are the scores. Uh, we got some PCs across the entire board. Uh, hopefully we can get some of those console players back at the top. And that's pretty much it. You know what? I just saw something I didn't even see before. As mentioned above, Crucible Labs is live right now to play some Lockdown. So that answers that question uh, of above. I'll probably put like a little thing across the bottom of the screen about that. Yeah, uh, Lockdown's available right now. It is not mentioned above. I refuse, Cosmo. I, re I read that thing top to bottom. It did not say it's available right now. I'm going to read it again. Oh, fuck. Oh, the right. It says you can play it right now. Oh, no. <laughs> no, fuck. Okay, fine. Fine. You win, Cosmo. You win. You win. All right. That's the end of that's the end of this week of Bungie. Hope you guys uh, did enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. I tried to go quickly. Hopefully, it didn't take too long. Uh, that's the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Of course, my name is Nightcrawler, and I'll see you guys on the next one.